Yes. Mukherjee. Yeah. Abhinandan, tell us about uh, the book you plan to write, how it connects with your studies, and what are your dreams for it? Sure. Thank you. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, firstly, when I was a kid myself, I was very fascinated with everything to do with archaeology and fossils, yeah. stone tools and things like that. But then yeah. I had very little access to good material, like everything that I could put, lay my hands on yeah. in the school library. Uh, were all books from the UK and the US. There was very little about Indian stuff. So, I mean, in fact, when I was in the 7th standard, I was so desperate, I found the address of a paleontologist working in Patagonia in Argentina and had written a postcard to him. I'm sure that card never reached him. But then, yeah. So anyway, so like, I really wanted to write something about it. And the other the reason that I want to write this book is, is Peninsular India particularly is full of stone tools. I see. Everywhere. In Why? Any river valley you see, uh, through any good rocky hills you see, if the rock is kind of the quality with which you can make stone tools, yeah. then you are bound to find stone tools there. Yeah. So all of us, when we go around on our excursions, when we travel, we are we are bound to have come across stone tools which we didn't manage to identify. So that's the gap I want to fill. I want people to know about stone tools, to be able to identify them. And that way what happens is, like what's happening right now, when I was working in Kutch for my PhD, all the places where we had stone tools were right on the rocky outcrops. Okay, but when you are have when you have stone tools sitting on the surface, you can't really do much about them because you can't put a date to them. For that, you have to find stone tools in the soil. But what's happening in Kutch is a lot of agriculture, okay, and mining. So agriculture and mining is completely destroying our fabulous Paleolithic heritage of this country. So I want to spread this knowledge to as wide an audience or readership as possible. Why is it important? to know this because this is our story this is who we are and this this story tells where we come from and how we reach here i mean all our technology like we are fascinated with ai i mean we should understand our ni our natural intelligence as well and how old do stone, stone tools go back uh the oldest stone tools so far they have been dated to 3.3 million years in africa the oldest stone tools in india the perfect conclusive scientific dates would be around 1.5 to 1.6 million years in India. and But then there are some stone tools in Pakistan which could be 2.5, but then those dates are not very clear. Yeah. So what is the problem with dating stone? The issue is you can't date stone directly. Okay. So if you, if, the, if you have a truckload of stone tools lying on the surface, no, it doesn't help. You can only study the structure of the stone tools. You can't say anything about the date. For that, as I explained earlier, you have to find it within a buried context. Yeah. It has to be under the soil. Why? Because you date the soil. Yeah, then you can date the soil above and below or the same layer where the stone tool is lying. So then you either create a tri time bracket with two different dates or you have the direct date of the stone tool of the same soil horizon where the tool is coming from. Just to get an idea, what are the most unusual kind of stone tools that have been found in India so far? Um, we have a huge number of stone tools. Like, if I say stone tool, which is the image that comes to your face, probably something shaped like this, yeah. right? This is what we encounter, in, like when each time we say stone tool. So yeah, these are the stone tools which were started. Uh, the uh, species called Homo erectus in Africa started making them, and then Homo erectus most likely spread these stone tools all across the globe, all across like the old world, not the new world, of course, but in the old world, which is uh, Asia, Europe. So. Uh, we have loads of these in India, so we know that from these, uh, we call these hand axes, from these hand axes we know that Homo erectus was very much in India. And then we have uh, some stone tools called, which are called Levalva, that's, uh, that's a big name. But the idea is basically you get lovely pointed st sharp stone chips, okay, and that's also a fabulous uh, improvisation on earlier stone tools because it gives you more control on the final product of that particular uh, stone tool. And then we have blades, stone blades. Uh, for example, uh, in the Harappan times, if I can uh, talk about the Harappan times, uh, we have this thing called Rohri Chert. Rohri Hills is in Sindh. But then all through the Gujarat and parts of Rajasthan, we have these Rohri Chert blades. So people in the Indus Valley period were actively trading with their counterparts in what is today present day Pakistan, but at the time was play, uh, sites along the Sindh. So, how old would the oldest man in India be dated to? 
Uh, once again, the oldest fossil that we have is the one from Hoshangabad, which was discovered by accident. Most, I think so, at least that's what I'm said, I'm not sure, by Mr. Arun Sonakia from GSI. But, and that has been dated to around 250,000 years old. Uh, in terms of uh, your book, will it simplify this for how young readers? I would love to approach a readership as young as possible, but given the technicalities involved, I think it will at least address the queries of 7th to 7th, 8th standard uh, people onwards. Yes. Well illustrated. Yeah, there will be very many illustrations, but <laughs> I just had a word with our potential publisher and uh, well as he pointed out and I know it myself you can't have lots of color illustrations because then the price becomes sky high and if a book doesn't sell then it doesn't make much sense so we'll have to stick to mostly black and white illustrations. You think we have enough books on archaeology in the Indian context or we need much much more? We need much 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 more and we need uh, specialized books, we need books at every level on archaeology otherwise people won't get sensitized, people won't understand what it is about. Last question Question, your phone number or email address? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Tell. Yeah, my phone number is 8900-226-424. Yeah, and my email ID is paleo, P-A-L-E-O, avi, A-V-I, at one gmail. One word, one word. Yeah, paleo, avi, one word, at gmail.com. Thank you so much, avi. All the best. Thank you, thank you so much.